Hey everyone, it's me Socrates again. Welcome back to another exciting video. This is going to be one of my first vlogs in a very long time. Not a travel vlog, but just, you know, a simple life in Socrates vlog. So what we're going to be doing today is that we're going to be cleaning up my bookshelf to some extent to move out some of the books I never really touch and make room for the newer textbooks and newer books in general that I'm going to need starting now and into the future. So with only three levels of a bookshelf, it's getting to the point where I need to start you know, moving around some books and putting them elsewhere and maybe start giving some away. But whatever the case is, I need to free up space so that I can get some more room for these new books in the future. So let's go ahead and check out what we have. So earlier I had a head start in cleaning up the bookshelf on the bottom here, which were mainly my undergrad textbooks. But I just want to really quickly comment on some of these books that I moved out. So, you know, we have here technical communication. This is uh, our engineering writing class and this class actually involved us making our first resume for you know getting a job and internship in the future so that was good memories this book got me really good so this is for one of my graduate classes principles of highway engineering and traffic analysis and this is taped on to the packaging and bubbling and all that so the thing that got me with this it's it's a kicker to this day because the syllabus for that class required this textbook, right? So I ordered it from Amazon, came in the mail, and when I came down to it throughout the whole semester, I never had to open it, and I never used it once. And I don't even know what this book even talks about besides the title. So it just goes to show that you can pass your classes without ever touching and buying a textbook. Not always the case though, but anyways, I don't even know what to do with this anymore. So, <laughs> so that's one. <coughs> Sociology one of my general education classes. And this is a really good class, honestly. If you have time, uh, I think a psychology class or a sociology class really does great wonders to the mind. So this is very informative to know. Oh, this one gave me the headache. This is our physics class, classical mechanics, I think that's what they call it, Newton's Laws of Physics. So yeah, they made us buy this textbook, which is just a reprint on paperback with the school's uh, you know, title on the top left here. This class gave me a big headache because I struggled and, you know, it was a lot of calculus and I got a B minus in the class. The only B minus I've ever had in school. But yeah, this class got me a lot of stress. Glad this was over though. Structural analysis to all the civil engineers out there. Structural, anything structural is, is a big headache. So this class was very stressful too. Luckily I got an A. Principles of environmental science. I think, oh, I think this might be, I don't know. This might be the geology class. It, maybe, I think. Either this or a different book. Good times though. What is this? Oh, <laughs> this is for our economics uh, civil engineering class. Good times. Hydrology, straightforward, you know, water environmental engineering so we talk about water pollution uh, the chemicals uh, BOD5 I think you know like the terminology for civil engineering and wastewater treatment used by used textbooks people save money moral issues in business so part of graduating was we had to take two classes and those two classes would involve you understanding how the world works in a sense. So I took them both in philosophy classes. One of them was business um, business ethics. So this is the textbook we use for it. And you know, it's a lot of case studies that brought about like, oh, this person did something bad. Like what would you do to solve the problem type of thing. Structural concrete, this is our senior design class for undergraduate. Um, very difficult class. There's a lot of equations in this, very complicated ones to design reinforced concrete. This one is definitely from high school. Thank you for arguing. It shows this one just explains how to argue properly, uh, how to read literature like a professor. Another high school book. Oh my gosh, MLA Handbook for Writers and Research Papers, sixth edition. What the heck? This is definitely high school English, and I struggled trying to do MLA format. Geotechnical Engineering. This our soils mechanics class. Difficult class. And here's the same textbook, except they use the international system, international edition, so they would use, I believe, meters. And the, the US edition, which is this one, they would use 
you know, the US units, so that will be feet. So that's a huge stack right there. And let's see what else we have here. Uh, unified design of steel structures. I took steel, so I believe this is the book I used. And then my graduate courses, construction, operations, manual, policies, and procedures. I must make a second stack here so the stack doesn't tip over on me. Oh, this is great. Common sense and construction law. This class out of all my graduate courses was one of the most interesting courses I ever took because we learned about a lot of court cases, not just about construction, but just in general, uh, legal court cases about like insurance, uh, who owns what property at the end of the day. This is our professor even told us this is construction law. The course name was gonna be one of the most interesting courses we ever took in our graduate studies, which I, to this day, I agree. It was a great course. Urban transportation planning. So to all you people who aren't, um, you know, civil engineers and are just curious about how it all works. So when people plan for a city in the future, you know, they do all these analysis about all these transportation systems and how best to organize the intersections and streets and where to put certain types of buildings and how it would, and then let's, let's say if you put a mall in the middle of a, you know, a city, how it, it would affect the traffic all along the different intersections of the streets. So really interesting class, very complicated, but you know, it's good to know that when people design cities, you know, like a lot of brain power went into it and a lot of engineering judgment. Uh, project management for engineering and construction. So more construction scope here. You know, the biggest takeaway is that you have to balance budget, schedule, and the scope in order to have a successful project. I, have a, I think I have a, another newer edition of that textbook, but it was the same information essentially, I think. So project management and engineering for construction, more graduate courses, what else do I have in here? Oh, right here. This book, I think this book changed my life, and I kid you not. So this one is The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Very widely accessible out there, either through, um, you know, I don't know, PDF, the Kindle or you know online or if you want the hard copy very easy to get on Amazon again I made a video series on this for each different habit and these are this is a self-help type of book uh, personal leadership as the book explains it where basically it's saying that you have control over what you want to do with your life and it essentially and it's all about scheduling effectively having a solid foundation in your life and a solid plan and then you know putting it on the schedule to make it happen and being realistic with yourself about how you want to you know go about achieving these goals and these long-term goals of yours so again check out the series the video series that i have about this book it's super great highly recommend it and this course that i took in graduate school is for our transportation leadership class so the book, or not the book, the class focused all about this book and the concepts from this book. You know, again, leadership. So, this book's it. Uh, oh man, I got a lot of, I, I used to play a lot of badminton, so that's why I have some of these, you know, birdies. Um, what else do I have here? Miscellaneous folders. Uh, oh, geez, this is a heavy book. This is statics, dynamics, vector mechanics. It's a, this is a hard copy and it's full color and it's a heavy textbook. I don't think I use this book actually. I think this is one of my sister's textbooks, but I use a different book for my uh, statics and physics courses, but that's cool. So that's my whole bottom shelf, which is mainly a lot of old high school, college textbooks. My second shelf, represents my graduate courses and some of my professional career stuff and a bit of my spiritual books because I'm you know I'm running out of space so this whole right side here is all my career stuff these are um, my three college binders for graduate school and all these little notebooks that you see here are my notebooks for each individual class throughout those semesters for grad school I got my dictionary and some miscellaneous other dictionaries in the back there these big uh, textbooks are to study for the professional engineering license exam. I just passed it recently, say yay. Um, 
I don't need to use these anymore, so I'm so glad that part is done with. So I'm probably gonna move these downwards. Batteries, because I use a lot of batteries. Um, my cookbook here. Um, the Bible. So I'm Catholic, and I, I like collecting a lot of these, you know, Catholic spiritual books. This one's the Word on Fire Bible uh, from Bishop Robert Barron, really cool. Here, and here's his newest edition that I have yet to read because I've been so busy trying to... Oh, it's dusty. The Word on Fire Bible, this one's regarding the Acts, Letters, and Revelation. So he, I think it's a four volume set that the author is trying to make. So here, let me open this one because it's similar to the other one I showed you. So it's pretty cool. If you're interested in the spiritual books or just interested in what kind of books I keep on my shelf, then you know, keep watching. So taking this out from the cover, you can see it's leather, obviously. Um, the edges, right, it's like gold trimmed. Very high quality book right here. So very awesome material. So I'll read this sometime. I'm just gonna quick flip here. It smells good too. Yeah. I also got the Ignatius Bible because part of what I do is I teach at my church and I teach about the gospel for whatever weeks. And this book, I, when I was reading it, you know, looking for a, a good, reliable Bible to use, um, this one has commentary on some of the sentences used in the Bible. So part of what I do to teach and lesson plan about teaching these is making sure that I get reliable commentary from like the church fathers or any like scholar that can reliably comment on the Bible. So that's part of the resources I use. And let me show you too. So for example, I think down here. So you have your typical Bible text in the top here on the very bottom where the footnotes are. They explain some of the phrases in bold and then, you know, they have commentary here. I use less of this and I use more Bishop Barron's Word on Fire Bible and a lot of online resources to, you know, really find the meaning of the gospel when I put my lesson plans together. Here's a typical Bible, no commentary, just, just strictly the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament. It's, you got the, what do you call it, like the gold uh, <laughs> glitter thing on the edges of the pages, but it actually gets on my fingers. Um, you know, just very basic Bible here, you know. It's nice, leather copy, makes, makes it feel very special, obviously. Um, the New American Bible, revised edition. And there we have here Pope Francis. It's like a book portfolio, kind of like a autobiography slash biography. You know what I mean? Kind of like it explains his life and all that. I, I read a bit of it, but I still need to like fully immerse myself in the text here. So one day, one day. All right, so here's my first level. I just want to quickly go over what I have here. Again, first level is all my spiritual books. Starting from the left to the right, a bunch of, you know, Catholic books. I have here the the Jesus of Nazareth book series from Pope Benedict the 16th. I was actually highly recommended this for multiple people because he, from what people say, he descriptively explains a lot of the meaning about you know Jesus and all of that. So have yet to read overall um, you know Catholic books or Christian you know Christianity books. Uh, Rediscover Jesus, Matthew Kelly, an author here. Life is messy. This one, The Splendor of Truth, from Pope St. John Paul II. A Pope Francis book, Amoris Laetita. I think I said that right, I hope. So in between here, we have a book from Jordan Peterson, 12 Rules for Life. I'm pretty sure a lot of people have heard of this. Um, I've yet to read it, but I read a quick, you know, online, you know, summarize of 12 Rules for Life, but I do have the full book, so whenever I have the time, I might be able to read this whole thing to get the full details of this book. Uh, let's see. Twelve and a Half, Catholic Bishops in the U.S., A Key to the Doctrine of the Eucharist to Save a Thousand Souls. Um, we have a book about St. Paul written by Pope Benedict the 16th. I'm trying to understand more about his life, St. Paul, and hopefully by reading this book I can get some more details on the context so I could put together some type of PowerPoint lesson plan about, you know, just teaching about St. Paul himself. So 
Can't wait to get into that. Uh, I got the Joy of Priesthood book. We have a Breaking Bread 2022 here. So this, you know, this has all the songs that you would sing during the masses. English. The colored books on the right here, the four books, is the Liturgy of the Hours. If you open up one of these books, it'll contain readings and prayers depending on which day of the liturgical season you're in. So this one you would read during ordinary time on the calendar year. Um, this one, if it's Lent season, you would switch over to the book in red and it will say, you know, Lent season and Easter season. And it's the same format. They have the readings, they have the prayers, and you have your ribbons that you can bookmark. And the blue one would be for the Advent season that we just had recently. So it's a smaller book. Got your ribbons back here. And the last one, this green one, would be for Ordinary Time Weeks 18 to 34. So it's green. Got your readings, the days of the week, the prayers, the psalms. So this is a way of praying. And you can get the four volume set online at your local church somewhere. If they sell, you know, if they have a bookstore or something like that. So that sums up what we have here on the first top level, which is all the spiritual books, the religious books, the prayer books. A lot of things I need to clean out, but you know, we're gonna take it one step at a time to clean it up, and it'll get to the point where I will be satisfied with how it looks. So that's pretty much it for the bookshelf tour of the Life of Socrates vlog. I hope that y'all enjoyed it. I know there's a lot of work to do to get this cleaned up and looking more neat. Um, I hope that your bookshelves look more neat than this. But yeah, you know, hope that you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to subscribe for more epic videos and I'll see you all next time. Happy holidays to everybody and happy new year if I don't see you again this year. Peace out. Take care.